Alright people, I've had my Mori Eel for about a year and 7 months now, or 19 months, however you want to say it. And people, I was thinking it's about time I give you an updated complete care guide. Now I've made a care guide before, but that one's only about 5 minutes long, and I've learned so much more over these last 19 months. So yeah, this is going to be a complete updated care guide with everything that I've learned. And if you want to get a freshwater Mori Eel, hopefully this will be the only video you will need to watch now quickly before we start i just want to remind everyone that every single animal is different everything i'm going to talk about in this video is based on my mori eel and my experience you could get one today and it might have a different personality and it might act slightly different so yeah just please keep that in mind everything i'm mentioning is based on my mori eel and what worked for me but it should also work out for you now the first thing we're going to talk about is tank size and people i'll keep it real i'm already going to be a little bit controversial there because when you you check online online they're going to say you need a 350 liter tank or some sources even say something like a 600 liter but people honestly that is only really for a full grown adult sized mori eel majority of people are going to get a mori eel that is a baby or a juvenile and they are going to be completely happy in a 200 liter aquarium for a decent amount of time like my mori eel was in my 200 liter for pretty much one and a half years and i only really moved her to the bigger aquarium now it's kind of in preparation for when she does grow bigger but yeah like for me personally i don't really think you need the full size aquarium straight away and yeah i do actually have another reason for that you see mori eels they spent majority of their time in their cave for example when my mori eel was in my 200 liter she had one cave and she literally spent 99 percent of her time in that cave yeah in general they don't actually need that much space because they spend so much time in their cave so i feel like a 200 liter for a baby or juvenile is more than enough and even when they grow into a full-sized adult you might potentially be fine with something like a fluval roma 240 that aquarium does have quite a bit of length but i'll let you guys know when my mori eel grows to that size the next thing i quickly want to mention is whatever aquarium you do get make sure you have a tight fitting lid it is so important that like we're going to talk about the whole making your tank escape proof in a minute but just in general if you are you know setting up a brand new aquarium make sure you have a tight fitting lid definitely do not keep an eel in an aquarium without a lid because they will jump out and escape now the most important thing when you're setting up your aquarium for your mori eel is going to be the hardscape because there's one thing that you want to make sure that you have enough of and that is hiding spots that can be in the shapes of caves or even just putting a few rocks together and having spots where she could hide behind but yeah like if you watch my video on how i set up my fluval roma 240 i'll put it up here somewhere if you want to watch it but there i put some some rocks together to kind of create hiding spots i also made a video where i added in the fake caves into my natural scape i'll put it up here somewhere and my mori eel actually ended up using both she used the natural caves that were created by roots and rocks but she also uses the fake caves that i've put into the aquarium and yeah people just i can't stress this enough it is so essential that you give your mori eel these hiding spots because when you first buy them from the fish store and move them over to your aquarium they are going to be stressed and they're going to need a hiding space where they can just hide and feel safe and if they don't have that you may struggle with things like feeding or even keeping your mori eel healthy now when it comes to the plants that one's a bit more interesting because mori eels don't necessarily need plants but a freshwater mori eel looks so cool in a planted aquarium so i would definitely recommend them however you need to make sure that these plants have a chance to root so if you are setting up a brand new aquarium then make sure you put in the plants right at the start and while your aquarium is cycling let the plants get their roots because the moment you have this mori eel in the aquarium she's going to move about and swim about and once she touches some plants they will get uprooted and move up so yeah give your plants about a month or two let them get some really strong roots and then they should be fine when my mori eel was in the fluval roma 200 all of those plants they were all fairly strongly rooted so she didn't move any of those in my fluval roma 240 those plants were all fairly fresh and they've only had about two months to get their roots in but even though she hasn't actually uprooted them and like i said seeing a mori eel in a planted aquarium looks so cool and unique so i would highly recommend that but yeah i was waffling for a while plants are optional you don't need them but if you do want them make sure you add them before adding in the eel now the last thing i'll mention in regards of the aquarium setup is the temperature both of my aquariums the fluval roma 200 and my fluval roma 240 and my fluval flex as well they are all at 26 degrees and 
all of my fish have been perfectly fine and happy including my amori eel so yeah if you do want to double check what they recommend online you can but at 26 degrees my amori eel has been more than happy over these past year and seven months and you know what i keep saying a year and seven months but I'm, i feel like it has actually been longer actually you know what let me just quickly check five minutes later oh okay cool people so i got my amori eel in may 2022 raw it's been like a year and 10 months like we're at the start of March right now. Right, wow, that's crazy. I've had Memorial for a year and 10 months. Apologies, not a year and seven. But yeah, that was the first segment of this care guide, the setting up your aquarium part. But for this next segment, I want to focus a bit on specific changes or adjustments you want to do to your aquarium, specifically for your Memorial. And the main thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your aquarium is escape proof. And people, I can't stress this enough. It is so important that you make your aquarium escape proof proof because eels especially the freshwater mori eel are escape artists and they will escape like just so you know when i got my mori eel and when she was a juvenile she tried to go inside of the output of my fluval canister filter so the part where all the water shoots out she was trying to go inside of that and one way i tackled that is i got a net the net i got from um you know the nets you get when you buy tangerines i just got one of those i cut it up made into a small square and i put it over the output of the filter and i put some rubber bands around it to keep it in place and that pretty much stopped my mori eel from trying to go inside however it did also slow down the flow of my filter so do keep that in mind that is a temporary solution but you shouldn't really have that many problems once your eel grows a bit bigger like i only had that problem for like the first three months and after that i was able to take it off and my eel was completely fine she didn't try to go into that outtake again now the other thing that you want to do is is any small gaps that you have stuff something in there what i've done i'll put in sponges you can get a spare replacement sponge from like pets at home or amazon or whatever and you can just cut them into small pieces and stuff them into those holes for example those cable holes at the back of the aquarium that lets the cables through those holes are big enough for the mori eel to go through so yeah take a piece of sponge stuff it in there and make sure your aquarium is escape proof now the next thing i want to talk about is optional however it will make your mori eel feel much more comfortable and that is upgrading your lighting to something that you can control you see in my fluval roma 200 where i first had my mori eel i still had the static light that the tank came with which was basically just a switch you can either switch it on or off and i had it on a physical timer which once again in the mornings it will just switch on and in the evenings it will just switch off and it didn't really replicate the morning and evening cycle so i upgraded to a fluval aqua sky 2.0 i made a whole review on it I'll put it up here somewhere if you want to see that but basically what it allows you to do it lets you set a schedule for your lighting so let's say for example you want your lights to turn on at 10 o'clock in the morning you can set your sunrise for about two hours let's say and from 10 till 12 the lights will turn on very slowly and gradually just like a sunrise and during that time your mori eel will come out explore the aquarium you'll be able to see it because there's a little bit of light but your mori eel will still think it's kind of like night time so it's just a really great way to watch your nocturnal fish because mori eels are nocturnal of course but also it will make your mori eel feel much more comfortable and the lighting will come in a bit later when we talk about feeding as well but yeah just having that general schedule will make your mori it will feel much more comfortable and it will allow you to see some real cool natural behavior especially in the evenings when your light starts dimming down again and the nocturnal fish start coming out it's it's just so cool man i really recommend upgrading your light if you don't have a light that you can physically control but yeah that rounds off this section which is the preparation for your aquarium and it can now take us to the exciting part which is getting your more eel because yeah once you've put all of these things into place you've got all these hiding spots and everything Thing like that and your tank is escape proof it is essentially ready for that eel now one very important thing that you want to do at the store before you actually purchase your mori eel is you want to ask them one important question what are they feeding that eel is that eel eating because eels when they've had a move like let's say the store just got that fresh batch of mori eels those eels might not be eating yet and honestly if anyone were to ask me for advice i would say maybe talk to them see if they can save you one and then wait for a week and let the store figure out what those eels are going to eat it's going to make the initial stage much simpler once you know what they eat and ideally you want to get two options because one thing that many people don't realize is when you first get this eel into your own 
own aquarium that whole stressful process for them is going to start again and they are not going to eat for maybe a week or two like mine did not eat for an entire week however because i asked what they eat when i was at the shop i knew what to try out and whenever she wouldn't take the food I knew it was just a matter of stress and not necessarily the food itself. But yeah, once your eel gets comfortable, it should start eating. And as long as you are trying out the foods that have already worked, you are going to be completely fine. Now, of course, how fast your eel starts eating really comes down to how fast your eel gets comfortable. And that's why all the hardscape and hiding spots are so important because that will speed up the process of your Mori eel feeling comfortable. And that's also why I mentioned the light because once again, that will make them feel comfortable much faster and they will Will start eating much sooner now let's say you are really struggling to get them to eat so let's say it's been a week you still can't get them to eat there are a few things that you can try out when i tried to switch my mori eels diet from earthworms to prawns i made a whole video on it i'll put it up here somewhere if you want to see it but long story short i soaked those prawns or shrimps in some garlic and that seemed to have done the trick as soon as i tried feeding my mori eel the shrimps after it was soaked in garlic she ate them straight away and yeah like that's a little tip you can try out and for anyone who bought a mori eel but they weren't able to find out what that mori eel actually ate at the shop i'll quickly tell you what my mori eel eats so mine loves shrimps whenever i put in shrimps she eats them right up bloodworms also works really really good and earthworms now i do have to say earthworms they are alive and it is a little bit disgusting when you have to cut them up in that so that might not be for everyone but earthworms was definitely something that she really really liked and i'm probably going to get some more soon to give her a little snack and yeah the reason i say get multiple options is because of something that happened to me and my mori eel you see for a while my mori eel was eating just earthworms and basically what happened like i made a whole video about it i'll put it up here somewhere but i couldn't get any more earthworms and i didn't have any alternatives i only had bloodworms but the bloodworms just weren't enough nutrition for my eel and i tried I tried so hard to get her to eat the shrimps but she, at that point she wasn't eating them it's only later i managed to get her onto shrimps so yeah what ended up happening is i couldn't get earthworms for about a week or two and my mori eel started attacking my fish it was such a bad experience man she completely took out one of my rainbow fish and some of my albino congo tetras and yeah i found myself in that situation because i didn't have that many alternatives of food so yeah i don't want you guys to go through that same thing so make sure you do have multiple options especially if you are trying to do a community tank setup like i am now people for anyone who does have a fluval aquas guide 2.0 or any lads that you can control here is a tip for feeding your mori eel remember mori eels are nocturnal animals so they'll be out most of the time during the night time which also means they'll be looking for their food at night time so some people actually recommend putting in the food at night for your mori eel however you can actually train them to eat during the day and this is how you do it so when you're feeding them during the day use your aqua sky 2.0 or whatever light you have and turn down the light but not all the way turn it down to about let's say 10 15 percent that way there's still some light in the aquarium but it's dark enough for your mori eel to feel comfortable enough to come out now of course feed your mori eel and get them used to that light and maybe do that about twice now after the second time you want to increase the light slightly now you can go from 10 percent to 15 or you can go to 20 percent it's completely up to you how fast you want to try it but just go up in small steps until eventually you get to a point where your mori eel is eating at full brightness that's how i taught my mori eel to eat during the day and people let me tell you right now it's definitely something that you want to try and do because i've spoken to some people who have mori eels but they can only feed them at night time because during the day they just don't show any interest at all like mori eels they're almost like dogs like you can teach them certain things it's so cool before we carry on if you are enjoying this video then let me know by leaving a like and if you want to see more videos like this every single week then please remember to subscribe it really helps me out now the next thing i want to talk about in this complete care guide is the question of tank mates now when you look online people you will see a lot of sources saying that the freshwater mori eel or the freshwater tiger mori eel should only be kept in a species only aquarium and people there is some truth to that you see if you are going to put other fish into the aquarium 
if you're Mori ill, there's always, always going to be the danger that your Mori ill might attack the other fish. However, if you are all right with going through that risk, then you can try making a community aquarium because the Mori ill is actually fairly like they're fairly peaceful man i can't lie like my mori eel pretty much stays in a cave all day when it's feeding time she comes out and eats but she doesn't really touch any of the other fish apart of course from the time when you know she was literally starving because i couldn't get any food for her but yeah there's a few things you kind of want to think about now first things first is the size of your mori eel anything that can fit into your mori eel's mouth is probably going to end up as a snack so something like a neon tetra yeah people you're probably not going to have much luck with those however there are fish that should work perfectly fine with your mori eel and they've worked fine for me for example the bosmani rainbow fish bosmani rainbow fish they are quite boisterous fish they are fast they are strong and if i'm not mistaken they actually come from the same waters as the freshwater mori eel and yeah them two they get along great also things like angel fish like my angel fish had no problems with my mori eel um the congo tetras which are you know tetras that get slightly bigger they were also fine the corridoras were fine the african butterfly fish was fine the rope fish was fine the fire eel was fine like i'm going to make a separate video specifically for the tank mates where i go through every single fish that i'm um, kind of worked out with my mori eel but yeah just keep in mind that it can also go wrong like there are some fish that definitely didn't work out and they ended up as snacks and also like for example in my aquarium my mori eel and the corridoras got along great however i did receive a comment one time from someone who got a mori eel and and they had corridoras as well and their mori eel ate all of the corridoras so once again every animal is different and just because it works for one person doesn't mean it's necessarily going to work for you but yeah, anyway i was going a bit all over the place my point is tank mates definitely work i will do a separate video because there is a lot of things we need to talk about there but yeah here were a few examples that worked out great for me now the next thing i want to talk about is their lifespan and their size and the lifespan is about 10 years the maximum size is about 60 centimeters so the main thing here really is just know if you are going to buy a mori eel you will have them for a long time you know 10 years and they do grow quite big so either have a backup plan where either talk to the store and ask them you know once the eel gets too big is it okay for me to bring her back or whatnot or check if there's any local facebook groups or anything like that where you can maybe try and sell the eel on but yeah anyway just make sure you have a backup plan now the next thing i want to talk about is whether they are passive or active and people are Honestly, they are a bit of both like I mentioned before in the video majority of the time like 99% of the time once they've gotten comfortable they will chill in their cave like when you first introduce them they may explore the entire aquarium that's probably the best time to really enjoy their beauty however once they're calm and settled they will spend majority of their time in that cave or whatever the hiding spot is however during feeding time they do get really active and you can actually teach them to eat from your hand i made a whole video on it i'll put it up here somewhere if you want to watch it yeah you can actually train them to eat from your hand and yeah because of that this is why i say they're kind of half and half they're like they're passive because they're chill in their cave most of the time but they're also fairly active because you can do cool things like hand feed them and the last thing i guess i want to talk about is are they beginner fish and people this is where i would say they are probably not beginner fish like just because of the whole predatory aspect where they could attack other fish and with the whole feeding thing and that like if you've never had an aquarium before i would say start off with something else get a few fish first get your experience up and then once you've had an aquarium for about a year and you've tried out a few different species of fish and that that's when you might be ready to look after a mori eel i mean by all means if you do want to try it out as your first fish go ahead but mori eels are quite expensive so it can be a bit risky too so i would say it's a moderate fish it's not a beginner fish but it's not a impossible fish to look after after it's yeah have like at least a year experience now people please please keep in mind that i am not an expert everything that i've mentioned in this video is based on my own personal experience with my own mori eel please even after watching this video do some extra research if you are not sure about anything that i have said now like i mentioned before one of the amazing things that you can do with mori eels is you can teach them how to eat from your hand and if you want to see how to do that then click right here